Now, if you don't know, I've been a landlord. I've had many Section 8 tenants and overall, I choose not to really go over Section 8 anymore, but there are still great opportunities out there. And there's a few people uh, teaching you on TikTok, on uh, programs, on mentorship courses, on how to do this profitably. So first and foremost, let's address that. Did you guys hear about that landlord that is exploiting his Section 8 tenants? Specifically with a monthly subscription for luxury amenities? Okay, she is talking about Tom Cruise, C-R-U-Z. I have not taken his program. I'm not going to take his program. I know a lot of people do. He does like a free uh, 8 p.m. type of webinar uh, on his, uh, basically it's his sales pitch, right? It's part of this funnel that he has. And uh, he will teach you and mentor you how to acquire a lot of Section 8 properties. He has literally like 800 or so, okay? So he charges, and he brags about this, he charges people for luxury amenities. Now, I've watched a lot of his videos. He keeps popping up on my feed. And one of the things he does uh, is he charges for a ceiling fan, right? $25 per month. So when you rent from him, you usually just get a regular light, maybe like a boob light, you know? Uh, those things are the cheapest, they're about five bucks. You install those, they install into the same things as uh, ceiling fans. And then if you want to upgrade, he will swap it out for a ceiling fan, it's probably pretty decent. Uh, and then he charges you $25 a month. That's just one little example. But aside from that, garbage disposals is another one. And you know, like who doesn't use a garbage disposal? Everyone needs it, right? But let me tell you, as a landlord, I've had over 500 tenants. Do you know how often people throw a piece of glass down, try to shred it and then it gets stuck? And then who gets called out to fix it? Me, the landlord, this bullshit, like it's so dumb. And I think that there's a little bit of a of benefit by doing it uh, the way Tom Cruise is doing it. Now I'm not condoning all his ways. Being a landlord of low income property for so long, you know, I can see why he's doing it the way he's doing it, okay? But let's keep watching, see what else she says. Things like a ceiling fan, dishwasher, a microwave, um yeah i are you are you confused and speechless too at just how terrible people can be yeah me too okay hold on hold on hold on hold on don't don't call this guy terrible don't don't cons don't call him names okay like this is his business model you're you're totally okay probably having you know recording this on your iphone for thirteen hundred dollars not complaining about apple are you not complaining about galaxies. Well, it's probably a Galaxy user. And that's another thing. You know what Tom Cruise does? He will not rent to anyone but iPhone users. Wow. I just heard that a couple days ago. Let me tell you, freaking genius. Genius. I, I know. Go ahead. Comment below. I don't care. Okay? You can hate me. You can unsubscribe. But there's a lot of truth to it. Uh, iPhone users tend to be better tenants, in my experience. I'm not saying they're going to go and take care of the property. I'm saying they're going to pay the rent, okay? Now, I'm no expert in this, but I feel like this would technically be like illegal or like a violation, right, for a landlord that is part of the Section 8 program. Okay, she, she's saying that it could be a violation. You know what? I think she's onto something. Um, I think this really could be a violation. I don't think it's uh, you're allowed to nickel and dime an additional, you know, rent fee for luxury amenities, because frankly, a ceiling fan is not a luxury. Uh, but I guess it could be. I don't know. Whatever. So, as a landlord, is that is that like a violation? Great question. I'm gonna reach out to my section. I do have one Section 8 tenant right now. I'm gonna reach out to that tenant's caseworker and I'm gonna see if that's the case or not. And I'll tell you, I'm not gonna implement his strategies. But damn, this guy, man, this guy is milking money out of the tax system to bring it into his pocket. Um, and you know, I understand that this lady, she's upset uh, about this, but Look, what do you think 
BlackRock does? What do you think uh, all the, all, uh, you know, all the defense contractors do? They do it on a like, like 20,000 X level, right? They milk money out of the taxpayer dollars, okay? What do you think happened with the pandemic? Long story, we can talk about that too, but all signs are pointing to that being a big squeeze out of the taxpayer's dollars. Let's keep going here. Mind you, he's here on TikTok, basically trying to teach other people how to exploit other people. Like, ah. Yeah, okay, I, I agree. Tom Cruise is teaching people how to exploit other people. Uh, I don't condone that. Uh, there should be, you should be, you know, um, a little bit embarrassed at the very least. Maybe ashamed, you know, but at the very least, he should be embarrassed about doing something like that. So, I don't know. This is like one reason I feel like housing shouldn't be like for profit because. <laughs> Wait. Housing shouldn't be for profit. Now, let's talk about this. If you want to be in a socialist country, no problem. Go live in a socialist country. But then you can't complain, okay? You can't complain about being in a socialist country if you want housing to be socialized. That's it. It is not a socialist country. This is a free market economy. This is where the, the people that go get it, you know, are go-getters, they're gonna go and go get it, or at least try their hardest, right? So no, it is for profit. So is food, food is for profit. So is the access to water, it's for profit. You think counties are not profiting off of providing you with water? Yes, they are, okay? So you wanna be a socialist? Go and live in a socialist country. That's it, it's that simple, okay? Now, I'm not saying every you know, landlord should be abusing people, I'm just saying it should be for profit. They give us loans for profit. We take on the risk of buying a property, like not knowing if the tenant is gonna pay. And you know, then there's some states that are really tenant heavy, meaning they, they're like tenant friendly. And then there's some states that are landlord friendly, like Florida. And this is where I am because I'm a landlord, okay? Yeah, I own my own home too, but I'm a landlord. And once I get you in, I'm not gonna go and jack up the rent every single year, five or 10%, like some landlords do. I'm gonna keep you in there for so long without raising the rent. I had a tenant not too long ago, Walter. He was my tenant for, geez, nine years. That guy was paying $800 on a four bedroom house, okay? Why? Because when I bought that property, at, you know, in the Great Recession, basically, that was the fair market value of the house. And I was fine profiting how much I did. I could have squeezed more money out of a different tenant, sure, but, it's not about greed, okay? If greed is what's motivating you, then that is the wrong way to go. But we got more Section 8 stuff to cover, okay? So let, let's keep going. I just feel like even if it's not illegal and if it's not a violation, which I'm not sure, um, it's extremely unethical. It's so unethical. Like, we have to do better. That's really a shame. But don't tell me what you think. All right, well... You know, she's saying we have to do better as people. And let me tell you something, girl. Um, when BlackRock and Blackstone buy up all the houses next time we have a great recession, it's gonna be worse. It's just gonna be worse. People are going to get squeezed out of it. Look, think about it like this. 30 years down the line, right? If you don't buy a house now, a lot of people are gonna die off. Those houses are gonna go to the heirs and those heirs are gonna sell off their houses. And if 100% of the purchases go to big industry and big corporations, it's gonna get worse. I don't know why they're not doing it right now. Maybe because prices are at all time high, but I don't know why they're not doing it right now. I don't know why they're not buying everything you know, up completely. Because if they were to do that, they're gonna have the upper hand and then they're gonna be able to squeeze the government to give more Section 8 so that they can make their money. It's all one big scheme, right? We got more videos to watch. Let's move on to the next one. I'm sorry, if you only wanna work four hours, it's gonna be harder for you to get a house. We busted our behinds. Mm -hmm. We had to bust. Look, I was born in 1978, so this isn't like me as a kid or whatever, and this is like 
44 years ago that they're showing but look at these numbers i'm not going to comment too much this is awesome it is really unaffordable right now is the bottom line of this but look at how bad it is look at how much the wages went up and how much housing went up. Hi, Whoopi. I'm Freddie. I run numbers on the internet and I got to show you something. The minimum wage in 1980 was $3.10. It is now $7.25. The average salary was $12,500. It's now $59,000. And the median household income was $22,000. And now it's only $77,000 for a 3.5 times increase. However, rent was $243 on average. Now it is $1,900 for a 7.8 times increase. The median house price was $47,000. It is now $419,000 for an 8.9 times increase. And the big one, college, was $2,300. It is now $30,000, 13 times more expensive. Our median household income to feel like they did back then for rent should be $171,000 for the family. And for college, it'd be equivalent to our family making $286,000. And to remind everyone, the median household income is $77,000. So whoopee, with all due respect, I think millennials and Gen Zs have it at least eight to 10 times harder than you all. Do. Wow, what a mind blowing. So average income is median income income is 77,000 but you should have about 171,000 that's why everyone has second jobs delivering for uber eats have a, you know two household incomes I mean not good stuff right this is ridiculous housing went from forty seven thousand dollars to four hundred and nineteen thousand dollars crazy I got more videos let's keep going come with us as we go evict our section 8 tenant all right let's go bitch Today we're heading to our first rental property after the recent eviction of our tenant. There are many pros and cons to having a Section 8 tenant, but the result of this one was extremely bad. After receiving multiple violations from our HOA, we had to take a look at the property and see what was actually wrong with it. And once we pulled up, it was devastating. Um, she was complaining of rats and all that kind of stuff. And she was complaining all right. of rats. All right, all right, all right, all right. This is not devastating, okay? I've been a low-income landlord for a long time. This is not devastating. That's some high grass and some shit in the yard. And, uh, clearly you can see why there were rats because she didn't really care to actually throw the trash out she threw the trash into the backyard okay yeah if you keep your trash around outside and in the backyard indeed uh, you're gonna get rats you're gonna get rodents and things like that uh, also I see the grass is not mowed so shame on you landlords for basically being a hands-off uh, approach to being a landlord you should be a little more active with that I'm at my properties all the time and I do have low-income properties not necessarily section 8 I have one section 8 but I'm out there cleaning up all the freaking time okay that's just what I signed up for not complaining but I'm just bringing awareness to these guys uh, maybe go clean up okay let's keep looking it's not a surprise that one would see rats in all of her time living there she hadn't cut the grass once look how bad this lot looked compared to the rest all right see that grass that grass is like three feet high at least um, Tenant hasn't, they're saying the tenant hasn't mown, mowed the grass at least once or not even once. And um, once again, guys, your fault, okay? If you're going to get into Section 8, if you're going to get into being a landlord, I don't care what kind of tenant it is. If they're poor, rich, it doesn't matter. Drive by your properties. You got to do this. You got to drive by. You got to inspect. You got to see what's going on. This is not a passive income job this is an active income that you're gonna end up having to do there's there's work you have to do okay let's keep watching the community it's no wonder we got many violations for this so that brings us to today we had the trash taken out the grass cut and bro you dumb lazy bastard this guy just like mowed over all the trash what the what a dumbass. Now you have to rake all that shit up or get more, you know, notices from the HOA who's, uh, you know, who's breathing down your neck because, I mean, you're just a bad landlord. Let's keep going. We were just there to put a notice of abandonment on the property. as our last attempt to communicate with this woman since she'd gone off the radar. If you want to see what happens once we get the keys and go inside and then hit that follow button. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, we need to watch the next one. Welcome to part two of evicting our tenant from our rental property. Today we actually got the keys and we stepped inside for the very first time and it was a complete mess. As you can see, she completely trashed this place. So look, you saw all that stuff? That's just a bunch of shit people left behind. That's, that's not a problem. 
and she even left her car in the garage. We did another walkthrough and found some stowaways, and yes, I do. All right, and in 20 years of being a landlord, over 500 tenants, I have never had a vehicle left uh, by a tenant. So this is an odd case. Could be a stolen vehicle. I know that uh, I did have one time a tenant who stole a vehicle, and then police contacted me as being the landowner, and uh, they said that they had reports, asked me to you know, see if I could uh, verify that that vehicle is on the property. And I uh, just had a different tenant check, you know, basically told them, yeah, sure. So whatever, they did what they did. I don't know how it ended, but that's crazy. Someone left a car. You mean rats. She also had a couple dogs and they had shit all over the car. Okay, you see this inside. There's, there's an issue here of a little bit of what I was talking about earlier. Um, they didn't, they didn't check on this property. They didn't check the inside. They didn't check the outside. Okay. They, they obviously just let this lady live with a few dogs, which is already like red flag, right? I know all you dog lovers got a lot to say about that, but you know, don't take tenants with dogs. I mean, just, if you're going to be a landlord guys, you want some hints? All right. Well, first of all, don't start off with section eight. Uh, second of all, don't start off with people with dogs and Third of all, don't start off with not visiting your property ever. And as soon as you see something, you give them that notice and you get them out. You, you got to enforce the rules immediately. On, on the second of the month, they get a three day notice and they are about to get evicted for non-payment of rent. Let's, let's keep watching bit and I think on the wall as well as you just saw there. But the biggest takeaway is that she left all the windows open. You see all that shit? That's just easy. That's just, that's just clean up. And then they said she left all the windows open to get in later. Okay, it was speculation, um, but most tenants leave their windows open, unlocked. They don't leave them open, they leave them unlocked. This is super common. I see it all the time. So whatever. Let's see if these guys have this anything else to say. This is a sign from the tenant that they might try to gain re-entry. So we had to lock that up, but now it's time for the cleanup process. So like and follow for part three. All right. I'm done with these guys. Um, these guys are probably brand new landlords. I don't know who they are. I don't follow them, uh, but they're probably brand new landlords. So I will say, if you're thinking about getting into section eight, into low income housing, into becoming a landlord, um, uh, you have to, you have to be a lot more hands-on than you think. Uh, me being a landlord for 22 years, I think now, um, I've learned quite a bit. And the biggest thing that I learned is that it is not a passive income stream. It is an active income stream and it's a great income stream. So it's worth it. All the work that you end up doing will pay off. Okay. But you have to kind of do a little bit. You have to get your hands dirty. And if you want to be profitable, you're probably going to be making some of the repairs yourself, the cleanup yourself, the painting yourself, and so on until the market's rent, market rents increase to the point where you can justify hiring everyone out and still have a profit. Or you can make it your job because, you know, if you have, let's just say a dozen properties, you should, after three, four years, you should easily be able to take home $100,000 a year profit uh, if you've leveraged them at 80% uh, loan to value and you should easily be able to do that if, but you're doing the maintenance on that and if you don't do the maintenance uh, if you hire everything out you might be at 50% of that at 50,000 so you know it's not it's not a bad gig okay although I am a real estate agent uh, in Sarasota Florida that's really my full-time gig I still manage all my properties